Welcome back to The Hill on News Nation. After a Baltimore, Maryland man was murdered while servicing an ATM in 2021, his family is now demanding change. Right now, robberies involving independent ATMs are not considered violations of federal law, while bank ATM robberies are. Glenn Gersterly's family has now been pushing to make all ATM crimes federal violations and therefore subject to an FBI investigation. His family is joining forces with Representatives Glenn Ivey, who is a Democrat from the state of Maryland, and John Rose, who is a Republican from the state of Tennessee, to pass a bill to do just that. And both of these congressmen join us now. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about this awfully sad story, uh, obviously involving Glenn Gerstely. Um, I'm wondering, and, and maybe we'll start with you, Congressman Ivey, uh, since this is from your home state, how you found out about it and, and why you feel the need for Congress to step in here. Well, when I was a local prosecutor in Maryland, we had these sorts of uh, robberies take place. Uh, people would come and steal ATMs out of convenience stores or grocery stores and the like. So I knew it was an issue even back then. But when the family approached uh, a, a little while ago, uh, we decided we wanted to see if we could help. Roughly at the same time, Congressman Rose reached out to me. He'd, he'd sponsored this legislation previously, asked if I would co-sponsor, and I was happy to, to, to join the team. Congressman Rose, it's called the Safe Access to Cash Act. Uh, tell us about it. What are you looking for? Well, so we're trying to, it's a logical extension of the uh, Federal Bank Robbery, Bank Robbery Act that was first passed back in 1934. Unfortunately, kind of an accident of history as ATMs came into use in the late 60s and then uh, ultimately ownership of those and operation of those ATMs was expanded to independent owners uh, in the 1990s. Unfortunately, the, the bank robbery statute wasn't extend, uh, extended to cover those uh, crimes and so it's a logical extension. We have had this problem all across the country, including in my district in the Nashville area, where we've had serial robbers. And we've seen the ATM robbery rate rise dramatically in recent years, more than tripling in recent years. Yeah. And so it's long overdue that we extend this coverage. You know, you talk about the thefts and robberies at ATMs. Uh, the numbers were, were trending at about three to four, maybe a handful of, or dozen or so a year, somewhere in the area about 30 to 75 from 2016 to 2019. But you talk about it, Congressman, all of a sudden it just exploded, four, five, six X from whatever number you're looking at. Why do you think that's the case? Why is this happening? I think I think the the bank robbers figured out that uh, this uh, this type of robbery wasn't covered, and so they're they're hitting the most vulnerable places, and and so independent ATMs are oftentimes not as well guarded, what not as in, in as prominent of places, and and that's part of the reason that this is important because so many rural Americans and inner city Americans depend on ATMs to get access to cash, and we want to make sure that they can do so safely. Right. And the, and when we talk the about federal resources are greater. Yeah. Yep, go for it. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say that the federal resources are greater. So for a prosecution standpoint and also from a, a, the penalty standpoint, from a sentencing uh, perspective, uh, robbers know that it's, it's, it's harder to deal with the federal law enforcement than state, state law enforcement. So they choose to target the softer targets, which are... Uh, these, these um, ATMs that are connected, not with banks or financial institutions, but convenience stores, grocery stores, and the like. Yeah, so when we talk about independent ATMs, you're right, grocery stores or, or barbershops, et cetera, not necessarily like Bank of America or Wells Fargo, et cetera, when you, when you pull on into the bank. You know, both of you are standing right now in a pretty divisive, pretty divided place. Uh, we don't normally talk about bipartisan legislation with a Democrat and Republican standing there smiling and, and laughing with each other. Do you two expect to work on other things uh, down the line? And if, and if so, what? I hope so. I, I think there are lots of issues. And one of the underreported facts here on Capitol Hill is that uh, so many of the issues that are advanced are done so on a bipartisan basis. In fact, the vast majority, it's just those, uh, I guess, issues that draw the most attention often that are the most polarizing. Yeah, I just left a hearing where uh, everybody agreed unanimously to move bi four bills to the floor. Uh, so it, it does happen. Uh, obviously, sometimes the, the higher profile provisions are, are the, uh, the ones that everybody focuses on. But but a lot gets done here on a bipartisan basis, and, and I look forward to working with Congressman Rose and others to do that 
as well. Glenn, Ger yep, Glenn Gersterly uh, just on the job servicing his independent ATM uh, when he was murdered in 2021. Congressman uh, Ivy, Congressman Rose, best of luck to you both on this one. And thank you for joining us here uh, on the Hill on News Nation. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.